Hello everyone, it's Will here, and today we are 3D printing speaker grills for my ESB 8000 series mid-ranges. We'll go over creating a design in Fusion 360, talking through some considerations before you 3D print, and actually trimming the material with speaker cloth. Alright, let's start by making a new design. So I'm going to reference the user manual for the dimensions. Now I verified these with my calipers and they are pretty accurate, maybe off by a quarter of a millimeter, so well within reasonable tolerances. And to design this I'm going to use these outer dimensions but shave off a millimeter for the trimming size of the speaker cloth. Now, I had to play with a few half millimeter increments to get that just right, so you might have to play with those tolerances depending on how thick your cloth material is and how aggressively push fit you want the grills to be, but one millimeter shaved off all of the edges here did the trick for me and how my 3D printer was calibrated. Cool. So let's start by making a sketch. And we're going to just make a circle, a rectangle, and trim off all the fat. So I'm going to start with a circle. The dimensions were 108, so I'm going to make mine 107 to you know, reduce that one millimeter. Then I'm going to create a center rectangle and drag it from the center and place it like that. So let's add some dimensions to this. Now in the um, schematics it was 85 millimeters, so I'm going to make this 84 millimeters, trimming off that one millimeter. And now we're going to remove all of these extra lines with the trim feature. Nice. So now we've got the basic outer shape. Now, another thing I would recommend doing is adding a second sketch dimension from the center to the edge and just making it half this doesn't take equals just making it half of the total I guess height so now this way whenever you change this dimension it will always be locked around the center versus I didn't do this originally and I tried changing this dimension in a and my print came out wonky. So make sure you're correctly defining all of your dimensions in your sketches. And the last thing we're going to do for this sketch is we're going to add an offset in. So for me, we're going to go negative uh, because we defined the outer boundary, so we want to go inward. And 7 millimeter was a good size. I could have gone a little larger, but that's what I ended up going with. Great, so now we've got the base of our shape. Now we just need to extrude it and add a chamfer to get the final part. Okay, so let's move on to actually making this 3D. So we're gonna start with an extrude. And now originally I printed six millimeters and looking back, I underestimated how thick the glue on the bottom of the grill would be. So I would probably shave a millimeter or two off of that and test with that next time. But out of consistency, I'm going to go with my original six millimeters, but just know that retroactively, I would have yeah, made that not as tall. Cool, so great, we have a 3D part. 
and now let's make it a little prettier and add a chamfer. So I'm just going to select the chamfer feature and select all the edges. Go down to two distance and we're going to make this six millimeters here and three millimeters here. So it flattens out a little bit before it, it the grill cloth extends over the speaker and we have a little bit of a flat edge on the side so it can push into the housing. Nice. So we can now send this off to the 3D printer. Now a note on materials. You're going to want to use ABS or another thermostable plastic. Most of the typical filaments are not designed to withstand the hot temperatures of a car. So you want something with a high glass transition temperature it is, I believe. And ABS, that's most of what your interior plastic pieces are made out of anyway, so it's a safe choice for making your speaker baffles or your grills out of. Now when I make speaker baffles, I usually go 100% infill just so there's no chance of me worrying about it being a uh, weak part and with the grills I went with 50% but you could probably get away with lower and you surely could get away with higher I mean I think 25% infill would be fine I don't see this as a part that will cause problems due to resonance but I went with 50% just because the cost is so low and I didn't really lose anything but 100% is also you know, then you, you'll have nothing to worry about. So I think the infill is pretty flexible, but just something to keep in mind before you send it off to the printer. And here is a quick look at the part after it got out of the printer. All right, so now we are going to attach the grill to the cloth. So that's basically a game of adding CA glue to the bottom of the grill, folding it over like this, spraying it with activator, and then letting it bond into place. Now, if you're going to do this, I would 100% use a CA glue with activator. It's going to make your life a lot easier. And obligatory, use gloves. I'm going to try to be careful about going with the grains of the cloth just so it looks a little cleaner and not like offset but and I'm going to tack the top the bottom the left the right and then from there stretch out and get the corners because those will probably be the most difficult both and just getting it to fit along the edge and overall build up so let's get started nothing to do but to do it all right, cue time lapse of me adding glue. Now, I'd be careful on how much glue you add. You can be really generous, making sure that the trimming is evenly pulled from all the sides, but you do have to watch out for big clumps building up because that will cause the grill to sit unevenly. Now, you can clean it up later with a razor as I did in this, but better to um, just avoid it entirely. So yeah, and after you've got all the edges cleaned up, you can go around with a razor and just trim off all the extra material and clean up any buildup of glue and you should be rocking and rolling. All right, so this is before and this is after. I'm really happy with how they turned out. I much prefer this stock look, especially as a default. No more flashy speakers on the dash, and it kind of removes some focus from the speakers. Now, 
things to improve, I would decrease that extrude height like I was talking about so it's a bit more flush with the actual speaker baffle. And I would play around with removing those bars that are the original speaker grills on the ESBs. So I'm not super happy with how on the left side it protrudes a little bit, but on the right side it is non-existent. I would just commit to one or commit to the other depending on how it looks with a smaller extrude. But yeah, thank you for watching. Let me know if you enjoy this kind of content. Um, but otherwise, look forward to some demos and smart tuning guides coming in the future.